Welcome. This is For Better and Worth. The podcast where we don't believe you have to sacrifice your relationship while you grow and build your net worth. We are your hosts. I'm Chris. And I'm Erica Young. And we're so glad you're joining us today. All right, y'all. Let's get into it. Hello, folks. We are back on the airways. Back at it again. <laughs> yes, we are, honey. And, uh... I'm excited. We've always got something cool to talk about, and we haven't haven't touched on this in this way yet. So I'm excited to talk about something new, and it is very timely because there's a lot of little changes going on around here. And so, yeah, I think it's it's time that we actually get right on into this one. Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of things we talk about, we want to make sure we bring, you know, things to the table that help people in their relationship and in your finances and You know, tracking your money and tracking your spending is a very big part of both of those (laughs) relationships and it's the financial piece of it. And I think what you're talking about with some of the changes, you're talking about how there are a lot of people out there that use Mint and Mint is going away. That is crazy. And I think a lot of the people that I have talked to are annoyed that they weren't given more time that is kind of coming suddenly at the end of 2023 mint is sun setting and they've not, you know, they're not transitioning any of their members to something else, but mint is free. And so honestly, you got to understand that you can't, if they weren't making money, I I was surprised myself. Like, man, how is it a whole software application is just, Sunsetting, but mm-hmm. if they weren't making enough money or getting, you know, the advertisers or whatever it was that they were generating revenue from, you can you got to understand that it's going away. But yeah, yeah, the need for a tracking tool does not go away, people. That's exactly right. Don't let this stop you from managing your money and looking at the dollars that are spent on a routine basis because. This is an easy way for people to opt out and say, oh, forget it. My tool is no longer there. Mm -mm. No, we're not going to use that as an excuse to uh, let go of this part of managing your money. So I think that's a perfect place to actually start the conversation is why is tracking so important? And I know we both have different views on. I mean, they're they're aligned views, but we have our own points of view and perspective around tracking and why it's so important. But what would you say is. Are, well, what would you say are some of the reasons that tracking is so important to you? First of all, I think people confuse budgeting with tracking. I feel like people think that if they if they sit down and they write out all of their bills, that it's a budget. And then they think that um, they have actually done the job. And tracking proves that you stay within the limits that you had, right? So if you say the budget for groceries is $500, then... You look at your spending by looking at your tracking mechanism, however that is. Sometimes people use paper. Sometimes people use digital tools. Um, Hopefully you're not trying to do that in your head because that is not something that I could do. Uh, But you add it up and then you see, did you adhere to the budget? So this is the only way, no matter how you do it, it's the only way to know whether or not you actually are doing what you said you would do with the budget. So, and even if you don't have a budget, tracking can tell you quite a lot. So I think it's just valuable. Um, I, I'm not going to say it's more important than the budget. I will not say that. But I, I, I know that people can get a lot of information, whether they have a budget or not, if they're tracking their spending. I always think about, I always like, you know me, I'm an analogy person. Yeah. And, and I think about this like, you know, when you work out, you want a, a overall plan, a workout plan, but then you got to track your progress over time because if you only go when you lift the same weight, are you getting stronger? Or if you don't weigh yourself, are you, if your goal is to lose weight, are you accomplishing that goal by, you know, seeing the pounds go down and see more muscle form? And so I always think about that because, you know, you know, I work out a lot and I track a lot of things that I do to know that I'm making progress. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about financial tracking, it's an interesting point you bring up because you have to do both. You have to create the budget, which is the overall plan. And then you have to monitor how you're, you know, sticking to that overall budget. And I know we've used a number of different tools over the years and we're pretty, uh, we're pretty consistent with tracking our spending and, I think if you don't track your spending, 
but you've set goals, how will you know how you're doing? Exactly. Are you achieving those goals? Are you just spinning in circles? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For years, we used Microsoft money and they went away. So we we were in the Ooh, position. I feel that pain. <laughs> yes, we were in a position where a lot of people are today. We were like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Because you get used to a tool, even if it's only been for a few years, and you're really trying to be yes. consistent. We use that tool, and it wasn't even that amazing. It was okay, but I was so used to it. I didn't, you know, I don't. I, you know, what's interesting here recently, I've realized that I don't particularly like change. And so I understand that it's it's hard for a lot of people when they're used to something, you know, what do they do? And I felt that I was like, oh, my gosh, it's going away. And Man, you just you just brought that back. And yeah. I have forgot. I have forgot about that. But I remember. For days we was messed yeah. up. <laughs> I remember Weeks. when that happened. And we were like, oh, man, we got to. And I think that's when we chose to go to, like, Quicken. And mm-hmm. it was a little more involved. And yep. it was like, oh, man, we got to redo this. And we were trying to get, like, old data from yep. money and import yep. it into Quicken. So we have, like, a starting point. Yep. So now that you bring that forward, I was oh, I feel bad. I feel for you people out there <laughs> who are using Mint and it's going away now. And you're like, oh, what am I going to do? I will say that it is easier today than it was before. And and so I know I know it's frustrating. And, you know, when you're not used to change, like I don't this is why I don't want a new phone most of the time. <laughs> This you, is why, because I these phones, I do man. not want to have to take old data and put it in a new thing and wait for it to happen. It, it That has been a clunky process, too. I have my limits. I like some change, but I don't like, you know, I guess that's what it is. I don't like the the digital change. The, the yeah, You don't like the transition. The transition. I like to try new things, yeah. but I don't want to be involved in the back end. And that's interesting because my my engineering background, you would think I like to th- see how things tinker and move. Figure it out. I'm not interested. But that's nope. a good that's a good analogy. Just like, you know, working out to, you know, uh budgeting and tracking, that's a good analogy transitioning because it has gotten a lot easier yeah now to go from yeah. one phone to another right and it doesn't matter if it's android or sam or or apple you can make the transition team really. android over here Whatever. team android over here mm-hmm. we, we, me and the kids are gonna get you on iphone no no i'm good so. i'm good but the whole point is the process has gotten easier yeah you know you log into your new iphone and your it's like your old iPhone is right there. Yeah, so. I still have trauma wounds though, and that's that's the problem. Okay, I, <laughs> you got PT, you got phone transition yes. PTSD. You remember the last time I think I dropped my phone off with you, and I was like, oh okay, I'm gonna go to the mall. I'm gonna go walk around and have some retail therapy because I'm not interested in waiting for this to occur. Ooh. Because because years before, one they it took three hours for that to happen, and then when you move from Android to iPhone. It took you weeks to get used to that new yeah, that was a, interface. That, that was a painful look. So that I'm not, I, I've had my own trauma and then I witnessed yours. I'm not trying to have no more trauma. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Well, as, as people out there who are Mint users are thinking about it, one, I want to encourage you to remain committed to tracking because <laughs> I believe there are major benefits and outcomes that, you will see as a result of that. And some of those I would say is as you're tracking, you know, I think uh, it it monitors, it helps you manage your behavior. Yeah. Because if you're tracking and you see that you're going off the rails, I know sometimes it will make me pull back. I say, okay, look, we, we have, if we had X number of dollars for dining out and I know we've already kind of hit that limitation. I was like, well, you know what? Looks like uh, we're gonna be making food at home, or instead of grabbing Starbucks, I'm gonna be hitting the uh, hitting the curry up, and mm-hmm. maybe I'll go buy a, a box of K cups that are of interest because I can buy a whole box of K cups for the price of one Starbucks drink. So <laughs> right. it just makes you it makes you change your behavior and modify mm-hmm. your actions, especially if you are committed 
to that bigger goal that you may have set for yourself yeah. that was part of the budget. And I think another benefit is that we tend to be very um, optimistic about our spending. We tend to think that we're spending less than we really are. So the tracking typically will cause us to look at, oh my gosh, this is what I really did. It's it's enlightening. It's, it is like when you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you're like, hold on a second, I got to wash my face, I got to brush my teeth because some stuff ain't right right here. (laughs) And I think the tracking does that to us. It forces us to say, oh, okay, wait a minute. I need to pivot or I need to make some adjustments here. Um, And I think that is a benefit because if we're not basing how we're doing financially in reality, then we're not going to get where we need to get. What What I heard you saying that is that we are delusional. We can be. You you know what? I've been thinking about this term, wishful thinking. I think that we do a lot of wishful thinking. Like the the, what if we could do this and what if we could do that? And typically when I sit down with, you know, and do budgets with people, they're like, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I didn't put that in the budget. Oh, I didn't realize how much that was. And the light bulb comes on. And and I have heard from people, they do not like talking to me because I, you know, sometimes am the bearer of bad news, you know. But that's, if we're not in reality, then what good are we doing for ourselves? I think I think you've got to really look at tracking your spending from the big picture. And that's where people become delusional because you are in the moment. And in the moment, you're not always thinking about the big picture. Mm -hmm. In the moment, you want to do what feels good. In the moment, you want to do what you think is going to make you happy because you're right here right now, whereas you really need to start thinking about what your goal was prior. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious. I mean, do you feel like it is motivating Or do you feel like it, for you, is something that you're not excited about actually doing the work? Because I think a lot of, like, tracking makes sense to a lot of people, but not everybody actually wants to do the work. And so um, is it motivating for you, or is it something that you feel like, you know, nope, I'm I'm not interested? Well, for me personally, I I don't know if I would use motivating, but... I think it keeps me uh, focused. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what I would say more so because I know even when you and I sit down and we have budget meetings and we talk about the month and what's coming up, because every month we have the general, you know, skeleton of what our budget is going to look like. But it seems like every month something comes up, then we have to kind of talk about it and figure out where things are going to fit. If we're going to put this in, then what has to come out? And so for me, it helps me stay focused because once we've done that and we've had those conversations, then I know how I can continue to operate and move. And that's why I operate with a lot of cash, because I think that helps me monitor how I spend. And for somebody who's not a big tracker, who maybe doesn't want to track, maybe that's what you do. You go to a cash based system because you can pull a certain amount of cash out. And I keep a running tally in my head. Like, I know if I'm getting a haircut, I've got cash for that. If I'm going to do this, I've got cash for that. And I don't dip into that cash because if I do, then I know, uh uh-oh, I just spent my haircut money. And so sometimes I'll even, you know, count my cash and say, okay, let me put this over here. And I don't even keep it with me. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's my own little mini tracking system within our overall tracking system because then when we get together and we have to true up the budget and we talk about what's coming in and that's another thing we still do that people we will sit down and say okay we spent this and we'll balance the budget and we'll put in the quick end where things were spent because we want to have those reports to see where our spending went Mm -hmm. over the course of the year. So I guess back to the original question, it helps me stay focused more than just motivated. Yeah. You actually use cash more than I do and more than a lot of people do. I think, Um, especially nowadays, it's so easy to use your debit card for everything and you're not prone really to do that as much as some folks are. I think because I know the budget, pretty intimately I know 
when there's an extra 30 or $50 that I can spend on this, that, and the other through the, through the actual account. And a lot of times people don't have that close connection to the budget and how much things are being spent. Um, and so, but yeah, I think because of that, you know, we can operate differently, but still be going in the same direction. Um, Look, I don't want people telling me what to do either. Uh, you know what? So, You're right because you know what? This, I get my the re- cash the out. reason we even have the cash is because, and it's called what is it called, babe? Well, hold on. It's two things. It's two different things. It Can is. It is. But what is it called? We we created. We actually created an, a, a category for you because yep. you need to have your cash. Yep. Chris is play money. <laughs> <laughs> but people, the money is real. <laughs> it is. And people do not, in, one, enjoy. They, I think a lot of people don't trust themselves with cold hard cash. I think they believe it's going to burn a hole in their pocket. They're they're going to spend more if they Man, use cash. No. And you're the opposite. I think. I, I will pull back and be like, like, somebody tell me how much something is. I'll be like, oh, no, I'm good. Yeah. I'm so funny how you talk about me all the time, how I spend money on a lot of different things, but. There are a lot of things that I just will not spend money right, on. Right, you're like, that's too expensive. I'm like, dude, it's twelve dollars and ninety five cents. <laughs> but because I'd be like it, the inherent value that I'm receiving back is not equivalent to exactly. that twelve dollar input that it's costing me. I mean, you're like, no, I want to pay six dollars for it. That's what it's worth to me. So I don't right. care. And I'm like, dude, it's twelve dollars. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe in a lot of ways, I'm an anomaly, and we're we're anomalies. But you know, you can be that way too, people. <laughs> So, I mean, I think we do need to talk about this. I, I think ma- mistakes have been made in our tracking. Yeah. A lot of times people think it's a foolproof. It's not foolproof all no, the time. So. No, because one, it, you know, humans make errors and so can computers. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, one of the biggest things that I think can happen is, like, you can miss a transaction. You could have it in there. You could delete it. You could um, n- not not double check that what came in wasn't already in the account. It's a lot of little things. And one of the biggest things with digital tracking that, that happens is somewhere, somehow, people get off. They have either missed the transaction or put in the wrong amount. Yep. And then... I have seen people put on their tool as a transaction mistake somewhere. Like, like (laughs) literally those are the words. They trued it up. They They trued it up with mistake somewhere. It's not called target. (laughs) It's not called cash withdrawal. It's called mistake somewhere. (laughs) That that is funny, but error, error. (laughs) Right. I remember though. I remember that when we had, there were a few times that even using Quicken. Yeah. That we were like, wait a minute, something, this is not adding up. Between Quicken and the bank mm-hmm. and the connection, something is off. And so we would be, you and I would be sitting there looking at the bank statement online and looking at Quicken and what the bank calls it and what Quicken put it in as is different because Quicken will try to... Match it. Yeah, it'll try to match it and it'll. it's almost like it's trying to read your mind. Like, I know you have spent this in the past and about this month about this amount and it tries to sync that up and it's like well that's not what that was mm-hmm. quick and you're not smarter than i am <laughs> i know what i spent the money on yeah and we've had to go back and like you know kind of fix things so though it's not perfect or foolproof i 100 percent still endorse and believe that people need to have mm-hmm. some sort of tool and while we're on this the old school check register is probably <laughs> not the option today. Listen, people. let me let me just say, I'll bet you people who are listening in are probably not ever have seen a check register. Let's be clear. Okay. So this this is us old school, That's old crazy. heads coming in. That's crazy. In. Yeah. Speak for yourself. I don't think, n- listen, our children have n- probably never seen a check register. They've seen a check register You before. think so? You know, we should ask them. We're, we're going to ask both of them. <laughs> If they know what that looks like and, and what it does, if they do, I, I don't know. I don't think they do. And so, but this also is not the full, like a check register just tells you what your balance is. When you're tracking your spending, you also want to know by category how much you spend in total, how much on gas, how much on dining, how much on clothing, entertainment, 
when you went on travel, how much did you spend in total? And so that requires you to categorize on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, it, there's a, there can be human error. <laughs> there can be error on the part of the app um, or, you know, trans, certain transactions coming in and we can change stuff. And they don't know, like the computer can't tell you, don't do that, right? right. So you can you can do those things too. Um, how do you feel about both parties potentially being a part of the tracking process? I think that it, it, it has to be a two way street. It can't just be one person, even if one person is prim- is taking primary responsibility for inputting the charges. I think you have to still know that. Uh, you both have to provide input. So, like, you know, when when you may do the tracking on your computer and have the software loaded there, oftentimes we will still reconnect and talk about what was put in or what was going on to ensure that we're aligned so that we don't miss transactions and we don't have mistakes because mm-hmm. you don't always know what I spend money on. And I remember I'll be sitting, you know, in my office or I'll be watching TV and you'd be like, Hey, what is a uh, such and such and such and such? Right. Exactly. Matter of fact, I have one of those right now. <laughs> I'm guessing what it is. Like, think it was a gift for your boss that came through. Is that true? You had to send somebody money. Oh, a Venmo. Yes. yes. See, see, yes. And I put it in. Cause I was like, you know what? I'm gonna read his mind right now. And I'm just going to guess that that's what this is because I don't typically use Venmo. I knew it was you. And we had talked about, there being that gift. So, um, yeah, but I, that happens but all the time. If we hadn't had some level of conversation before that, you yeah. wouldn't have known. Yeah. And when it did come through, you were like, oh, this must be what, uh, what Chris spent money on. Right. And I, and I enjoy tracking. I'm the nerd. I, you know, I feel a sense of completion and like wholeness. I know it sounds crazy. This is total nerd, but like I, I do, I, I feel incomplete if I haven't done the track, meaning I haven't balanced the transactions and ensured that they were categorized properly because on a mo- monthly, if not more often, but on a, definitely on a monthly basis, I look and I see what we've spent so that I can understand what's really going on here. And we're getting close to on an annual basis. I typically will do the entire year to see how much we spent in total. Um, again, for that reality check. And I, it just, something in me settles well when I've looked at it, even if it's not pretty, even if some parts of it are not I think exciting. It, I think it gives you some level of comfort. Yeah. Because. Uh, and control, to be honest. Yeah. Well, we already talked about, you can't put baby in no box. <laughs> but, but I think it, it gives you a level of comfort. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I don't necessarily enjoy that part of it so i'm happy to relinquish that duty (laughs) to you but i stay fully engaged and i think that's the important part of you know a couple relationship and you know financial journeys and tracking and things like that because you both have to stay engaged but i've got a i've got a question uh for you do you do you think that um tracking spending is more important when things get tight or when there's a lot of money flowing, like what, what's your thought on that? I think they're equally as important. I think a lot of people make have this misconception that if I don't have a lot of money, then I don't need to budget or I don't need to track it, but it's still giving you clues as to what you're doing and where, and honestly where your heart is, it shows you, you know, um, I think it's equally important because, um, and we heard it in church today. Our pastor said, you know, more money doesn't make you more of a giver. It just makes you more of who you are. Amplifies more of who you are. Yes. And so, and the tracking will will show that, right? It'll show, and not just in giving, but in all the other areas. It'll show you how important it is for you to be wearing certain clothes or how important it is for you to dine out. And and We had a friend of ours that said that too. Mm -hmm. We were uh, out to lunch one day and he said, you can look at my giving, you can tell where my heart is. Yes. And so that's a, that's an interesting point. Right. You think about that. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you know what your values are and, and, and you're tracking your, your actual spending will show 
and prove that your values are in that place, that's huge. That's that's being in alignment and being in integrity about what it is you say you want. Here's a crazy thing, because we talk about when money, people would think that when money is tight, you really got to be on top of it, which I agree that you do, because you have less of a margin for error when things are tight. Because if you make a mistake and things are tight, that can be overdrafts or that could be a cascade of negative consequences that come. So you do have to really be on top of it. But I agree with you that I think it's equally important. And I come back to this uh, this one this one example that I all that, that I think about because I had a buddy that you know I went to high school with and he went on to play college football and he got drafted into the NFL and I remember like some years ago we had uh, connected with him and he was saying how as long as his account was within like ten thousand dollars he was like uh, he was cool. I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? As long as your account is within $10,000 of where you think it should be, yeah, it's okay. That's a huge margin of error. And it's like, it doesn't matter how much money you have. And I know $10,000 to a billionaire is probably nothing. Or even a multimillionaire is nothing. But $10,000 is $10,000. Right. And so it tells a lot about how you approach money if you're like, well, this is my margin of error and ten thousand dollars could be really impactful and so when he said that i was like man i think you might want to tighten up (laughs) on how you're uh, managing your money because especially in that area when football football players typically don't retire from the nfl as millionaires Mm. there are a lot that do but there are far more that don't mm-hmm. when they've had opportunities to create these incomes. Yeah, so. I mean, it's their their season there <laughs> is short. It's not like a full 30, 40 year career typically. Um, and I think when people have more money, there is the assumption that now I have the privilege, the right, the freedom to yeah. not do these things. And I actually think if anything, it, it matters more to do it when you have more money because you have more responsibility. You know, there's there's more that you can do with your dollars when there's more coming in. And that part's exciting. I don't know that we think about it. We think about it, uh, you know, having more money as having less stress. But really, it's more responsibility and it's an opportunity. And so if you are looking at your dollars and saying, what's possible with this? that's a pretty cool place to be um, that you can be more impactful and touch a lot more people. And so that's, I, I don't know. I just think that that's pretty cool. Yeah. I think also people have to be going back to that. What is your bigger yes that you're saying mm-hmm. yes to? And it always, it always for me goes back to what's my bigger plan, bigger goal, bigger yeah. aspiration. Yeah. Is it to, you know, create generational wealth is it to get out of debt is it some level of financial freedom and independence or is it to you know make a purchase or whatever it is whatever it could be for you I think you have to keep that at the forefront of why you're doing what you're doing because then it makes all this other stuff easier yeah like tracking can be tedious or mundane but it's a necessary evil yeah and that necessary evil has to bleed back to what your bigger goal is that you're working towards. And we're going to get into that in another podcast, people. <laughs> I don't like you saying it's a necessary evil, though, because I like it. I, well, I think it's cool. Erica, let's be honest, though. Everybody doesn't like it like you. I know. I know. And it's just... It's, it's a it's, task. So that goes into this other part. It's, is. It's, it's vernacular. It's potato or potato. Okay. You know what? Evil, really? <laughs> so um, I think it. I think it's really important, though, that in any part of your financial management, you, you think about what each person is good at or really wants to take part in. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, who who is going to be the one who talks to vendors or contractors or does those kinds of things or who is going to track the spending or create the budget or who's going to make the calls, who's going to, um, do, you know, there are different roles. Who's going to look into the insurance? Who's going to make sure that the investments are doing well, whatever it is, right? And so each person has a role and not everybody does everything. And I think it's important to 
figure out what that is and then respect each other's roles. Um, and, and that is what forces you to connect around different money matters because where one person might have a strength, another person may not be as strong and that helps you both, you know, when you, you just let, like you said, let the person do what they're good at or what have you, or what right. they really want to, to be a, a part of. So you're getting into kind of some of the tips that are available to people. But before we even get further into that, let's talk about a couple of the tools that are out there, because I think that's something that people really need to tune in with mint going away. People are actively looking for an alternative and there are a ton of things out there. But what are some things that you've seen or utilized or you've seen, you know, success with? Well, you know, we we already said we use Quicken, so we already gave that one away. Um, there's a tool that I'm really looking at for quite a bit of people right now is Smart Credit. That allows you to figure, it connects with your credit report and gives you tools on how to improve your credit pretty quickly personalized for you. So they'll say, take this action and it'll improve your score by like 10 points or what have you. Um, and that is neat. In addition to that, on Smart Credit, it actually has a money management tool so that you can pull in your accounts and track your spending and categorize and look at what it, you know, basically replacing the functions that Mint had as well. So that that I think is a really cool thing that I'm going to be looking into personally speaking as well. Um, there's a lot of them. There's tons of digital tools, tools you can use on your computer and or on your phone that can be found out there. I, you know, it, it I think it's all personal preference. Right. I mean, I, you know, Monarch Money is is great for couples. It's designed, you know, sometimes to like split transactions and things like that if necessary. You know, there's also And I think people just have to take some time and do some some research and see what's going to work for them because like one of the tool one of the tips that you said was somebody has to be you know, responsible mm -hmm. and play the role. But then just because you try one thing doesn't mean you have to be married to it. So yeah. like you, I think you say you can date the tool. I like, I like the idea of dating the tool, give it a little bit of time and, um, get to know it, look at its features. And that's why, they give you, that's why they give you like a free trial or um, like with smart credit, you get a dollar, you pay a dollar and you'll, you know, get a chance to try it out. Um, so I think don't feel like you have to commit immediately. Maybe you try it out and use it as a game. I, that's one of the things that I actually like is, you know, just see it as a game at first until you really want to decide that you're making the commitment, you know? And I, I think the other thing, the big thing is don't connect 5 million accounts. Oh, oh my man. gosh. Don't, you may not want to connect everything. Just connect your main account and then play with it with that one. Right. While you're trying it out. Exactly. Don't, don't think, cause honestly we have a lot of accounts and that's hard to keep up with making sure they're all categorized. So I focus on our main account, main checking and savings. Um, the one that gets the most activity yes. is, what I, is, what, is what we think right. that, 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 sh that people should do. Yeah. Is just focus on that one because like though we have a lot of accounts, some of them don't get much activity. So as long as we monitor that main one, yeah. that's where we need to put the bulk of our time. So. Right, right. So – I think that's the biggest thing is just keep it simple in the very beginning while you're trying to figure out what it is that you want to do with it. Um, what else would you say? What would you say? How, how would we make it worth it, honey? How would you make tracking your spending worth it? Well, I think I've already said it. So I'll just remind people is keep the big picture at heart. Like just know that tracking is a means to an end, you know, though you enjoy it. Um, is that better than a necessary evil? Yes. It means to an end. <laughs> so I say, you know, make it worth it by remembering what your bigger overall goal is. And that's where the budget comes in. And that's what you're bleeding to because tracking will help you make sure you stay on track with what that bigger goal is. And like I said before, it could be a number of things. It could be, you know, financial independence. It could be debt freedom. It could be, you know, you're trying to... Uh, make a purchase or whatever it is, as long as I think you keep that thing in the forefront of your mind, then that helps you stay on track. Yeah, absolutely. And tracking doesn't become 
an issue at that point. So right. So what would you say is your make it worth it for this? I think that your progress is limited if you don't track at all. So in order for any of your financial progress to accelerate and really feel good along the way that you're you're seeing the progress, tracking is necessary. So maybe there's a way, there are different ways to, you know, make it a game, um, switch off who does what, but make tracking a priority because I, I just think that you're hindering quite a bit of your financial progress if you don't do it at all. So make sure you make it a make it a priority. Man, I think that uh I think that summarizes all of it. Yeah. So we hope you guys uh take benefit in what we're sharing here with you. And so just keep tuning in and until next time. We're out. Thank you for spending some of your time with us today. We appreciate all of your support. So be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you listen to this podcast. You can find us on Instagram at For Better and Worth. And sign up to receive our free guide, The Seven Reasons Your Money Relationship Isn't Working With Your Partner, on ForBetterAndWorth.com. Until next time, we're out of here.